the ambition here is very, very big. It's really nothing less than to create a 21st century approach to clean energy, which tries to get beyond some of the uh, shortcomings of what I would call the 20th century approach. So what was the 20th century approach? It was uh, a strategy that centered on subsidies and of the government picking winners. And I think, frankly, we've seen the limits of that. The uh, government doesn't do, a pretty, uh, doesn't do a very good job of picking companies or technologies or industries. Um, I think it does a better job of funding basic research, but doesn't do well at deployment. So I think another focus is deployment. And I think it really is around getting away from a subsidy model to a finance model, trying to bring to bear uh, limited government money to leverage private capital and using the discipline, as you've heard, of private funders who have an expectation of being paid back and of earning a good return to ensure that the money is put into things that are going to pay off, that are sustainable and are going to work. And I think the logic here is to get out from under a political deployment of capital, where often you're rewarded, rewarding favored industries or interests, to one that is really uh, more in a finance spirit of trying to flow resources to things that are going to succeed and, and pay back. We're thinking in New York that, that we want the Green Bank to be a financial institution uh, and, no, uh, and no mission creep. We don't want it to be in the subsidy business. We want it to be focused on financing, working with entities that are making progress in the market, but for the lack of availability of financing. That's its mission. So in terms of stimulation of demand, that's not going to happen within the Green Bank itself. That has to happen in terms of some of the regulatory changes that I talked about, as well as the reprogramming of other things that are going on within NYSERDA that have normally been a grant program. So a good example is something that we can borrow from Connecticut in this idea of solarizing, or in New York, Energize, which is for energy efficiency. So in, in New York State, uh, right now, there's a residential energy efficiency program. 70% uh, of the houses in New York State are more than 70 years old. So you'd say, boy, lots of opportunity for energy efficiency in, 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 in homes. Uh, the, the state will pay up to $300 for, a, for an audit and pay up to 20% in the form of a grant for the actual cost of the retrofit. Fantastic. At the current rate of penetration, it'll take 1,000 years <laughs> to retrofit the housing stock in New York State. So the only good news about that program is that it's ineffective because otherwise we run out of money. So the, so the reason why I talk about Solarize or, or, or Energize is these are examples where when a community gets together and decides that it wants to do something, it lowers customer acquisition costs, and it creates a critical mass of projects, so uh, lowers customer acquisition costs to the service provider. It lowers the construction costs, so together those things lower the cost to the, to the, to the customer, and it creates peer pressure. So you can imagine migrating the kind of grant program that I talked about to one that would, say, give 25 or 50 bucks to a community organization that would generate a certain number of projects. So that's a kind of example where you generate demand, and out of that, there'll be financing opportunities that the Green Bank can finance. When I first came on board uh, working for the governor, I said, we need to understand our customer, the voice of the customer, to your point, Richard. And um, when we went and talked to the customers in the state, which is the businesses in my case, about what was working and not working, uh, there was a lot of people that were really concerned about energy and the cost of energy in the state. And Connecticut is working hard to revitalize our manufacturing community, and we've got some great promise. But many of the manufacturers said, unless we solve this problem, it's going to be really hard for us to compete and pay one of the highest electricity costs or even energy costs in general. And so I came at this issue with how can we solve this problem and also look for ways to stimulate the economy at the same time. And what I like about this green bank concept is we not only help these companies in a cost efficient manner because the, the financing that's being put in place is very much market driven. It's, it's relatively inexpensive and particularly with interest rates where they are right now. We're not only helping them access capital that honestly wasn't so easily available just a couple of years ago, right? Because you go to a bank and when, they, when you tell them, I'm going to upgrade my entire building or I'm going to put a fuel cell in, not always something that they could re readily see the return on. So having the, the state step up and help 
create that market in a sense, or, or at least put some bounds around the market by putting their own capital in. Um, it's really, I think, to help create a, a market for, to help our companies that wasn't there before. But it also has the opportunity to really build on what is the, the fledgling green, green energy that we have here developing in the state. Principally led, but you saw the fuel park, uh, the fuel cell park that Brian showed you moments ago that was built by uh, two local companies. And I think that is also a very, another great opportunity that's coming out of this effort is a way to create the jobs here in the state because we have the brain power and we have the leadership in things like uh, Cephia to really demonstrate we can do some things differently. From the private sector, uh, one of the things that I first observed in my 15 minutes of joining government, both at the federal level and at the state level, is that uh, when you work in the private sector, the meetings you have with private sector entities you, you're working with, even if you compete for business and you lose, for example, are win cast as win-win meetings. Well, we'll do something together later. The meetings I've, I've had with the private sector, including some of the meetings with the same companies, have been win-lose meetings. They've been about companies wanting something from government and some kind of subsidy, some kind of grant, something like that. And so the thing that I worry about, and Alfred, since we're talking about beating up people, if I beat up <laughs> Alfred, the one thing that I worry about is not the credit issues, although I do worry about that. Uh, I worry about how we approach the private sector, because what we're doing in the private sector is really different. And so we've had many meetings with private sector entities. We describe the strategy. And at more than one meeting, after we get done saying, look, we're waiting to hear from you how we can enable you, they come back and say, well, what do you want to do? Because that's what private sector companies, when they deal with the government, they wait for the government to determine what the program is going to be. And then they just, companies decide whether they want to participate in the program or not. And we're saying, no, no. You go first, and then we'll tell you what we want to do, <laughs> as opposed to the other way around. And this is really a profound difference, which raises you know, two quick other points. I think that because we're trying to do things differently, we not only have to train the market and market participants differently, we have to also, in a sense, get some of the environmental groups uh, that I think are unsettled by this, because we're talking about animating markets and... I don't know if that feels so good to a lot of people in the environmental community. We're migrating things from grants uh, to things that are different, and so there's that issue. And I think the third thing is the political issue, because while, while I don't think any of us are proposing doing cylinder-type things, it's much easier for government to do things that, as Dan said before, far away from the market. And as we get closer to doing things with the market, where arguably government has the most can have the biggest effect in terms of leveraging, just being kind of one standard deviation away from where markets are, that's where the risk, that's where there are a lot of risks, where we can be accused of crony capitalism uh, or, you know, why are you really there? Couldn't the private sector do it on its own? We're much easier when we do things that are, you know, purely R&D related. In Cephia, we changed a lot of things, but it's a small team and you know, there was a finite number of programs. Um, and while that was even challenging in and of itself, because changing the, 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 the direction, the vision, and the culture within a small organization even has its challenges, as, as Dan said. Interesting to me was the challenge of the marketplace. And the folks, for example, the distributors of solar, you know, who put the, the, the equipment up on the roof. This was a whole new thing. They wanted subsidies, right? And much easier to just have you write a check and not have to go through this process of getting things underwritten, go through a whole process of getting financing. So it's not just a challenge of, you know, making some, getting some new products out there. It's getting a marketplace to suddenly shift gears and realize maybe that days of subsidies are gone and maybe now we really have to find new ways to think about how we're going to finance these things. I think the lesson here is that you need innovation very broadly. And there's a lot of talk in the clean energy arena around technology development, but I think what we've demonstrated in Connecticut, and I think New York is doing the same, is you need innovation in financing, in marketing, in public engagement, in incentive programs, and in policy frameworks. So it's got to be a whole package of innovation efforts.